All right, we got Aura Ring, Ultra Human Ring Air, and Ring Con. And today we're comparing all three, the pros and cons, to help you decide which one you should buy. Now, first off, a little bit of background about the companies because I do think it can influence your purchasing decision. So Aura Ring is by far the market leader and they've been around since 2015. This is now their generation three, released in 2021. Ultra Human, they're on their Gen 2. This is the Ring Air. Their Gen 1 was released in 2022. This one was released in 2023. And Ring Con, they're on their first gen, released in early 2023. You're gonna see why this is important when we get to the pricing section, but also some people are, very rightfully so, concerned about the longevity of a company and whether they'll still be around in a few years. Does it work? Yes. All right, let's start with the design of the actual rings. They're rings, so they're gonna be more similar than different, of course. The Ultra Human Air is actually my favorite because it's the sleekest, it's the most minimal, it's the closest to just a regular ring without feeling as much like a smart ring. You do have one small bump at the bottom, that's where your sensor is, and like all the rings, the sensor is gonna go on your palmer surface of your hand. The Aura Ring, this is Stealth, it's their matte black or matte dark gray color. They have three bumps, again, on the palmer surface. And the nice thing here is that they have a little dimple which helps you align it with that dorsal side of your hand because the rings can, of course, rotate pretty easily. It depends on how tight they fit on a given finger. But with the Ultra Human ring, there's actually no external marker. So if you want to check the positioning, you have to either look down the barrel of your finger or take it off, reposition it, and slide it back on. Ring Con is a bit unique in that it has a still circular on the inside, but the outside is squared off ever so slightly and it feels the chunkiest. But if we actually were to look at the weight of each of these, they're all the same. You're not gonna actually tell a weight difference by holding them. So the Ring Con, and my size is four, Ultra Human is three, and Aura Ring is also three grams. But keep in mind that the Aura and the Ring Con, they're both size 10, whereas for the Ultra Human, I got size nine, just based on how their sizing kit was fitting my fingers. And I think part of that is because Aura and Ring Con both have three bumps for the sensors on that Palmer surface, whereas the Ultra Human Air has only one sensor. Therefore, it doesn't encroach as much into that space where your finger is, and hence the smaller size. Now, all three are gonna come with sizing kits, of course, and some people say to wear it for 24 hours just to get a feel, but keep in mind your use case. Wear the sizing kit the same way you're gonna use your actual ring. So for me, that's exclusively at night because I think that the fitness tracking for all these rings isn't nearly as good as having a dedicated wrist fitness tracker, whether it's a Fitbit or Apple Watch or Garmin or Whoop. But Ultra Human goes from six to 12, Aura Ring from six to 13, and Ring Con from six to 14. So if you have thicker fingers, Ring Con might be the one for you. Now, if you decide you do wanna buy one of these rings, we have links to all of them down below. You will get a discount for using our link. There's a custom coupon code for each. And of course, it does also help support our channel for which we are very grateful. All right, now onto the charging. So both Ring Con and Ultra Human Air they have lights, so you'll see on this charging case there, I put a sticker here, a black sticker to block the light because if you have this plugged in, because this is a charging case, so it actually has its own internal battery. So even with the ring outside of it, there's a light to indicate the charging status of this. And I don't want that on when I'm trying to sleep. I like my room pitch black. Same thing with the Ultra Human Ring Air. So again, I put a sticker here. Or a ring, they know what's up. And again, that's part of the benefit of three generations. They can tweak all these small things. They have a light here but that light is only on when the ring is charging. Uh, whereas with these other two, they're on regardless. So even if you take the Ultra Human Ring off its charger, the light still stays on. And this is a blue light too, which you need to minimize at night, which just frustrates me to no end. Both Aura and Ultra Human have about five days of battery life, whereas Ring Con has about seven. But with this charging case, they rate it to up to 150 days which is very impressive. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> very nice. Now keep in mind, the size of your ring is actually tied to your charging puck. So the size of the charger for a size 10 versus a size seven is gonna vary significantly and you may not be able to charge between sizes. Now keep in mind with Rincon, they do also sell a separate puck similar to these that are not charging cases. And those, I haven't tested it, but based on the images, I think that can work across all sizes. Honestly, I don't think the battery life matters that much because you're probably able to charge these pretty consistently at least once a day to top them off. The other thing to keep in mind is that with small devices with tiny batteries like this or AirPods as an example, the battery life tends to degrade more rapidly over the first couple of years. So while ideally you should keep it between 20 and 80%, 
It's a little bit impractical. I, 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 I'm very lazy. I don't want to think about things. I just want to let things charge and then use them as designed and not have to worry about like, oh, oh what is it at right now? Should I charge it? Should I not? I want to minimize the number of decisions I need to make each day. But when I'm traveling, I sometimes don't even take the pucks. I just take the rings because I know they're going to last several days. Again, I wear them only at night, so they last a week plus. And when I'm at home, I just charge them every day and wear them at night. All right, onto the apps of each because these are ultimately sleep tools. Well, I see them as sleep tools more so than fitness tools. And to see how much utility they provide, they need to be able to give us useful data in easy to understand ways and help drive behavior change. Now with each of these three apps, think of the trade-off between simplicity versus power user behavior. And Aura Ring, they've been around the longest, they've done a lot of revisions to their app. I think they do a great job balancing the two. So it's very, the homepage is very simple, balanced. They have the main things on these tiles very easy to understand. And if you want more info, you can tap in and get more data, dive in a little bit deeper, etc. When I'm using this app, I mostly go to the readiness tab. And here I'll be looking at my HRV, my heart rate variability. And that's gonna guide how hard I train that day, as well as my resting heart rate. And if I'm not feeling well, I'll also look at my body temperature. I found that Aura tends to be pretty good at catching a body temperature elevation when things are off in my body, when I'm getting COVID or this time in uh, October 25th, I was having some, I have a GI condition, so I was getting some GI upset and feeling pretty crappy. And of course, my body temperature elevated significantly there. I'll also go to the sleep tab and over here, I'm looking at my total sleep time. So seven hours and nine minutes, nice. Nice. Now I'll also go to my sleep tab and I'm looking primarily at my total sleep duration. And again, you can also find resting heart rate here. Sometimes people really obsess about their sleep efficiency score and the various stages of each and all that stuff. I've never really focused on that. The O2 saturation is also a very useful feature. It can track breathing regularity or irregularity and help alert you of things like sleep apnea, which you may wanna get worked up by a professional, which is actually why I am getting a sleep study done in the next few weeks. Moving on to Ultra Human, very similar to Aura. And I actually wish that both of them had a bit more customizability because with both, we're looking at activity goal front and center on Aura. And with Ultra Human, it's also one of the top things, movement index here. I don't really care about my movement score, or my fitness score with my rings because I'm not using it for that. I do really like that up front and center, very prominently, Ultra Human gives you these various recommendations. So right now, it's towards the end of the day, and they're telling me I need to restrict my use of stimulants like coffee, caffeine, so that I can sleep at night better. In the mornings, they'll tell me, hey, it's time to get some uh, direct sunlight exposure. Huberman would be proud. And I love these little tips, these actionable tips based on my sleep and wake times. It's gonna tell me when it's safe to use certain levels of caffeine or when I need sun exposure and so on. Very useful. One thing that is interesting is they have a VO2 max score, which, you know, they're basing this off of my resting heart rate at night. I don't think that's gonna be very accurate. But the funny thing is these guys are probably much closer to my real VO2 max score because Apple Health, using your Apple Watch when you're doing like a 30 minute walk or other strenuous exercise, they also calculate a uh, VO2 max and it's like low to mid 40s, but I've gotten my VO2 max tested earlier this year and I'm 49. So Ultra Human Air, 48, 47, 50, a lot closer. Now, similar to Aura Ring, you can tap into any of these various tiles. You're gonna get a lot more information about that and uh, related elements. However, compared to Aura, they don't have this trends feature and these trends allow you to really dive a lot deeper into any small factor, and I don't see that in Ultra Human. One thing I would love to see with Ultra Human is a tighter integration between their CGM experience and their, their ring, because obviously glucose and sleep very closely tied in both directions, and I'd like to see some actionable feedback based on that. They have been very fast with software iterations, so who knows, it might be coming. And finally, we have RankCon, and I would say in that simplicity, power user balance, they tend to lean more towards the power user. It's not as simple initially, it's a bit more of a learning curve, but it is a little bit easier to actually customize, which is an issue I have with the two other apps. By the way, I don't have temperature tracking on my RingCon, and it might be because I wasn't on the latest firmware, but generally speaking, all three of these rings should be giving you temperature tracking at night. If you really wanna dive deeper into your data, I think RingCon provides the greatest level of transparency so even looking at your sleep score, they tell you each of the various factors that contributed. Whereas if you look at something like Aura, you go to your sleep score and you hit the information, it'll tell you just general information about sleep score, but not what contributed to that night's sleep score. Now, one of the downsides with Rankon is when you get to the stress score, they're not able to pull in data as of now from Apple Health. So if you do workouts and you track using your Apple Watch like I do, 
or even other like, you know, Strava or whatever, which tie into Apple Health, that then gets pulled to both Aura and Ultra Human and that gets factored in. So they know how much exercise you're doing, whereas Rincon won't. But if you go to the Trends tab down here, this is where you can get very uh, granular and customize each of the different screens. So I don't really care about my fitness, which is why I removed it from my favorites list. But you can go here and edit your favorites and add, you know, my oxygen saturation or my time in bed, my time awake, et cetera, et cetera. And you can even sort them in whatever order you want. So if you're a power user and like diving deeper into the data, then this definitely has some advantages. Another feature for Aura and Ultra Human, but not for Rincon, are these guided meditations and breathing sessions and articles to learn. Both Aura and Ultra Human have their own version of this. Rincon does not, not sure how important that is to you. It's not personally something I've tested much because that's not the main utility that I'm trying to seek from these devices. If you care about sharing your sleep results on social media, both Aura and Ultra Human have this feature where you can customize what you're sharing and how it looks. And with Ultra Human, as you can see, looks pretty similar, but not as customizable as what's on Aura. When it comes to integrations, Aura is definitely leading the way. Again, they've been around the longest, the most established, the market leader. But keep in mind why you want integrations. I think it's important for all three of these to write to Apple Health, which they do, and we're gonna get to that shortly. But the reason I like the integrations is for telling those other apps about my sleep, about my recovery, about my HRV. If you do care about tracking workouts from your rings, Again, Aura Ring has the best integrations, including Strava. So you can start a workout from Strava, track it, including GPS. You'll need your phone for that, but it can track your heart rate, your activity, your steps, etc. But I haven't found them to be very accurate. And I think you're way better off with something like an Apple Watch, Garmin, etc. When it comes to the Apple Health integration, both Aura and Ultra Human are on a similar level. They allow for a lot. Actually, when I made the last video, Ultra Human was missing a lot of things like your actual sleep. They couldn't write sleep to Apple Health, but now it can, they updated that. And as you can see, very similar for Ultra Human. Rincon, they can write to Apple Health, but they're not able to read much data. And even what they can write is limited compared to Aura and Ultra Human. And if you're wondering why I have certain things turned off, it's because I track the trends of things like my resting heart rate. And I've been using my Apple Watch for several years to track my resting heart rate. So I don't want these devices to write my resting heart rate into Apple Health because it'll show a different trend. Since they are measuring my resting heart rate at night, whereas my Apple Watch is measuring my awake resting heart rate. All right, onto pricing, starting with Aura. They actually have two designs. They have the Heritage, which is the older version. And I bought this a few years ago. It has a flat ridge on the dorsal surface of your hand, so on the backside, away from the palmer surface. It doesn't look as natural, but it's a nice, effective way to keep your ring properly aligned. I like the new dimpled Horizon personally. So let's choose Horizon. It is currently 319 with that discount code you can get below. I like Stealth, this matte black, which is $3.99 with the discount. Their prices do change quite substantially based on the color and finish that you choose. I also think the brush titanium, new finish, looks pretty dope. And they also have some limited special edition exclusive things with some designer brands, which are even more expensive. One thing that's unfortunate is that to get the full utility of the app, you do also have to pay a monthly subscription fee, which comes out to around $72 per year, in addition to the cost of buying this upfront. So Aura can get away with that because again, they are the market leaders, they're the most trusted, the most dominant, but with the two others, we don't have a subscription fee. So next up is Ultra Human Ring Air with our discount code currently 314. And I have the matte gray. And regardless of the color you choose, they're all the same price. Speaking of durability of finishes, by the way, I'm essentially wearing all three of these only at night. And these Aura rings, both of them, they look essentially brand new. There's no scratches. The Ultra Human also looks pretty good. A few scratches at the corners because they do have a sharper edge, whereas the Aura is a little bit more rounded. That could be part of the durability difference. And Rincon, I've actually worn these on two adjacent fingers like this when sleeping. And it looks like it's actually rubbed off a bit on the Rincon that finish. And you can see a bit of silver underneath the black. If you're wearing these primarily at home, you'll get minimal scratching and signs of wear. I've actually worn both the Aura and the Ultra Human at the gym before for strength training and not ideal. So first of all, they're not gonna be very accurate at tracking those kinds of movements. But if you're trying to grip something tightly, something that's heavy like a barbell, or I think I was doing lat pull downs at the time, they're not comfortable because that thickness on your fingers, even though it's not that thick, it's enough to be unnatural and bothersome. And then you can feel it kind of push into your finger in a, in a strange way and it scratches them up really fast. So I don't recommend doing that. And finally, Rincon, which is the cheapest, the newest, and they do have some special promotions right now with Black Friday. And again, the nice thing here is that the price does not change based on the color you choose. All right, so finally, which one should you choose? I'll say that Aura would be my pick 
if you're okay with the cost. It's a higher upfront cost plus a subscription fee. And keep in mind that none of these are gonna last forever, right? With these small batteries, you're probably gonna have to replace them after a few years. So the cost definitely adds up a lot faster on this, but it's the most established, the most polished, the app interface is really clean. They've had so many years to work on this. They're gonna be around for a good while longer. And it's also the only one where I've seen research studies back up the validity and the accuracy of a sleep driving. Ultra Human is the sleekest, the most comfortable, the one that looks most like a ring. So I think stylistically it has an advantage. I also say that if you are planning on using a CGM with Ultra Human, there's an advantage to using you know, the single app that can do both. They're also working very aggressively to update both the hardware and the software. So this is probably the most up and coming and the most rapidly evolving. As for Raincon, I don't love the squarish design and also the finish is rubbing off pretty easily. But if you're primarily budget conscious and that's very important to you, then this one is definitely the cheapest. But smart rings are only one tool in the toolkit to optimize your sleep. If you wanna learn more on how to get better sleep, check out this video or this one here.